I, got, I decided I was going to become serious about playing the cello at around age 12 or 13 and started practicing as hard as I could and started to get some opportunities to perform as a recitalist and orchestral musician and also chamber musician and soloist. I think collaboration is really key to making music. Even with a, a single performer, in a way you're collaborating with the audience because you're, you're getting something back from the audience and you're responding to that. In a, in a sense, that's a collaboration as well. Well, currently, I'm really uh, doing the same thing that I've done for the last uh, more than 30 years here in New York, which is a combination of different things. Now, the danger is that you lose your focus. If you're trying to wear too many hats at the same time, suddenly you feel like jack of all trades, but master of none. So my answer to that has been to just try to develop my abilities and skill as a cellist as best I can and to, to be prepared for any situation that comes my way musically. And I think these days that's what you have to do just to survive as a musician. You have to, you have to be ready to do something new or different that you may not have done before and perhaps learn it quickly in a, in a day or two or, or a few hours. So you really have to be on your toes. And then I also do a fair amount of teaching. Okay, guys, so Libertango by Astro Piazzolla. Remember, he played, he played a kind of an Argentinian accordion called the Bandonian. One, two, three, four. But I think, I think there is the the value of serious study of, of music of, of any kind. And it's been shown by study after study that that can, that can help to develop the brain in people of all ages. As a musician, uh, obviously I don't think that music is boring, but again, I think it needs to be presented in a way that's interesting to people. If it's being taught in a boring way or, or in an uninteresting way, that's the impression that people will have of it. But uh, if it's taught in a vital and an exciting way, and if it's performed in that way, then it can take on a, a new life and, and be exciting for, for people to listen to and, and to perhaps learn how to do themselves. So, like, I, my sister did violin and she really liked it. And, and my mom was like, oh, you should do violin too. But I was really excited to do it, so I guess both. So yeah, my sister influenced me. Um, like when I was six, I played piano for three years, but I quit it because I hated it. But I went to this orchestra concert, and it was like flute concert. So, and I and I thought it was like the sound was really pretty, so I started it, and I continued from like second grade to now. What I see today happening is students are forced to miss another class to take their their orchestra class. It puts the students in, in a kind of an awkward position. Should they be forced to uh, miss out on their other studies simply because they, uh, they want to learn an instrument? And I feel it can, it can have the effect of stigmatizing music and causing the, the students to not want to be part of it because it, it might harm their other studies. 
but I don't think music education should be viewed that way. It should be, it should be part of the main curriculum of the, uh, the overall educational program, and it should be viewed as something that will help your studies in mathematics or in English or in what have you, science. Everyone's just so into pop music, yeah. like, but, but like, parents listen to it. I don't know. It depends on what you like. Like, if you play an instrument, you're more interested in it. But if you don't play an instrument, then you usually don't listen. To it. Yeah, because especially in high school, because in school there's like only a specific amount of classes you can take, especially when it comes to like electives. So music is an elective, so you're limited with your choices, especially if you know what you want to do. Yeah. People rather do something else. So. Music. So I think it's it's partly having strong music programs in the school systems, having music schools in the places where people live, so that people can take lessons, not just young people, but also people of all ages. One thing that I've noticed is that there's an interest in people that may be in their later years or in their middle years to learn an instrument. So I've had some wonderful experiences teaching adults of different ages, <clears throat> introducing them to the cello and to music uh, for the first time or perhaps rekindling their love of music from the past. I never wanted to be a music teacher or a professional musician, and I always wanted languages, but I decided to come back to music after many years of you know, on and off playing. Yeah, I found it very steady, and I found that there was a point in my life where I needed something very steady and solid to do, and it helped tremendously. I don't regret uh, making music my career. Of course, it's been challenging at times, as is any career, but I think um, it's given me a good foundation and a, and a kind of uh, grounding in my life to have my music and my, my cello, not just as a performer, but as a teacher. So in terms of uh, happiness and making a living, I would say it, it's provided both of those things for me. Thank you.